Peace, peace, peace. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know, it's your boy Big Slay Hope, and I got another video for y'all. Um, I know it's been a while, man. I've been I've been slipping, man. Slipping, for can't get up. Nah. So um I just wanted to make this video. I've been reflecting a lot. I just just doing a lot of shit, man. Um, but I wanted to share this video with y'all. For those of y'all who've been following my journey and know my story, um, going from being in a gang. Um, to becoming a Muslim, my incarceration, you know, coming home and like, you know, just trying to be positive, just trying to be some type of light um, in the places full of darkness, you know. And <clears throat> so if you've been following my story, you know, you know, y'all know about Ratatouille, <laughs> right? Um, and this is not really so much about Ratatouille, um, but I want to draw the connection and the correlation to certain passages in the Quran. Um, but yeah, for anything else, if you go, go out there, purchase my book, the link is in the bio, um, who profits when black man gangbang. Um, also there's a link to a documentary that I am in, um, we came to heal, check that out. And yeah, so I'm gonna get into this video. So yeah, talking about Ratatouille, um, it's not about Ratatouille, but it's again, this is a correlation that I want to draw. And so Ratatouille became a Muslim, right? Um, he became a Muslim, um. I don't know about his sincerity, right? Only Allah knows best. Um, so it was just something that I was pondering upon, right? Like when you have beef with somebody or you got problems or, and then people join, they become part of the fold of Islam. Um, it's always, first of all, it's always a beautiful thing um, when people try to change their lives, right? Or when people trying to get on, on the accordance, they try to build a relationship with their creator. That's always a beautiful thing. I'm always for change. I'm always for positivity. And I'm always for redemption. Um, but then it just poses another question, right? Like, you don't know somebody's sincerity. Um, you don't know um, to what extent uh, it has, has, you know, if people going to let bygones be bygones, right? So it just leaves that question of, but even when you have that question and you have those thoughts, you got to know that Allah is the best of planners, and you just got to trust upon your Lord, right? <clears throat> but I wanted to highlight that this happens a lot, right? Like, in, in, in Surah 3, um, verse 103, and I've read this before plenty of times, right? it says, And hold fast all of you together to the rope of Allah, and be not divided amongst yourselves. And remember Allah's favor on you, for you were enemies one to another, but he joined your hearts together. So that by his grace, you became brethren and you were on the brink of the pit of the fire and he saved you from it. Thus Allah makes his verses clear to you that you may be guided. Right. So this verse was revealed because um, Owls and Khazraj, um, the two Arab tribes, they were fighting with each other. Right. They were warring with each other um, for, for years. Right. But then when Islam came um, and they became Muslim, they became brothers. Right. They was able to put those beefs to the side. In the name of brotherhood. Um, so that was a beautiful thing. Um, and of course it can still be a beautiful thing. If, if people wholeheartedly. And fully. Are holding on to the rope. right, Which is the Quran. And whatever the Quran entails. right. Um, and so if you hold on to the rope of Allah. It's possible. right? If you adhere to the tenets. If you wholeheartedly believe. Um. That's why he says he joined your hearts together, right? So that by, by his grace, we became brethren. Um, so these people that were for decades, probably, or centuries beefing with each other, they became brothers, right? Um, so it is possible, right? It can be done. Um, but I was just reflecting on these things, right? When, when you start to see people that you might have had beef with in the past embrace um, the religion that you're upon, um, sometimes it can make you uneasy, and sometimes you could be so happy, right? But... You never really know people's intentions, right? And again, that's just between that man and Allah. <clears throat> um, and only Allah knows what's in his heart and his sincerity, right? Um, but <laughs> when you feel unease, um, I will tell you this, right? Um, Allah is the best of planners. And Allah says in verse 5, Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ma verse chapter 5, verse 11, he says, All you who believe, remember the favor of Allah to you. When a people desire to stretch out their hands against you, but Allah held back their hands from you. So fear Allah, and then Allah let the believers put their trust, right? So, of course, when I came home, I was apprehensive, 
um, of course, like even, you know, when I was in, in prison and people were sending out kites um, or for people to harm me and stuff like that, right? You, you, it's just something that I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm, I'm not tough Tony, right? I'm not a big gorilla and I'm not afraid of nothing. Like you be, you be apprehensive, right? Like nobody wants to be harmed. Um, people want to feel safe and you know, you, that, you, that's, that's just your right, right? Um, so yeah, there's moments I always thought about. You know your past catching up to you or, or other things right so you you know you you're apprehensive maybe fearful nervous of your safety right so this is a verse that i always remember right um and remember the favor of allah when some people desire to stretch out their hands against you but allah held back their hands from you so fear allah and allah let the believers put their trust so i always remember this verse when i felt apprehensive or when i felt any type of way right that Everything is part of God's plan, right? And Allah is the only one who could really protect me and like keep people's hands away from you. So people could plot and plan and do all of these things, right? But Allah is the best of planners. That's also a verse in the Quran, right? Um, so that's just a reminder to some people, right, that might be dealing with some of these things where it's like you feel apprehensive, you feel fearful, you're scared. Um, the trust in your Lord, right? And and supplicate to him. Um, but also do your due diligence. Try to protect yourself, right? Um, this is not a, a thing where it's like you just sit back and let God take the wheel. Nah. <laughs> you know, God is already driving. But you also got to be apprehensive. You got to be vigilant. And you got to do things to kind of like try to protect yourself, right? Um, so, yeah. So, this is a thing that I always remember, man. That like Allah, Allah has protected me from a lot, right? He has kept harm away from me. Um so it's it's a very it's a very beautiful thing um so that's just a reminder for the people right when you're feeling like that in those moments that god can keep people away from you right like he kept people away from his messenger um sallallahu alayhi wa sallam i give you a little story when he left mecca and he was being persecuted and they was on his heels you know you know for you know saying using a little slang right there was there was on the prophet heels man um <laughs> and he was trying to cover his tracks um you know, cause in the desert, right? You trying to, you know, cause they could see tracks of the desert sand, right? So he was trying to cover his tracks or whatever. Um, but they were so close to him. Um, and it was him and Abu Bakr, his companion. Um, and they went into a cave. And, you know, the people that were trying to kill him, they were right outside the cave. And, yeah, like, Allah sent a spider. A spider created a spider web. Like, right after they went in there, a spider created a spider web in the entrance of the cave. Um, and when these people that were trying to kill the prophet were gonna go in the cave, um, one of them said, "Oh, don't don't go in there. Like it's it's a waste of time. Um, because if somebody went in there, there would have never been a spider web on the entrance. It would have been, you know, it would have been taken down. Um, so yeah, in in that way, Allah saved his prophet, right? Like he the spider came and created a web. Um, it's not coincidental. I mean, some people will say that, right? But people that don't believe." they was to hear this but it's not coincidental like right after they went in there a spider created a web um right in front of the door and that that prevented them people from going in there had they went in there they would have seen them there was nowhere else to go right um so that's just a story and an example of how anything could happen how allah really can protect you and keep people away from you um i remember this one time we went to the park or i came to the park and my homies had just did something to somebody. They had, like, stabbed some dudes or beat some dudes up. It was always some drama on the block. And they ain't tell me nothing when I got there. <laughs> so um, I get there. We chilling in the park. Um, and then, like, it was a car. It was, like, a black car dr driving with the lights off down the, the wrong way on the wrong way, right? So we seen them. And, you know, we had that mentality, like, we don't run. You know, um, we was just dumb. Um, so the, the car driving down the wrong way. And then my, one of my men was like, oh, I think that's them, them ninjas, them ninjas that we poked up earlier. Like, they said it was going to come back. I said, bro, so y'all ain't think about telling me this? <laughs> like, why? Like, y'all, yo, it was just crazy, right? But the point is, like, right before them dudes got to us, like, like right on the corner of um, 216 or whatever, and Barnes, for those of y'all who know, um, there was police there. And, like, them dudes got locked up, right? So that's another example to me, like, Shit, we, who knows what could have happened that night, right? We ain't had no gun. We ain't had, like, you know, so um, them dudes got locked up and they did have a weapon, a firearm, right? Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's moments like that, right, that is just, like, I mean, of course, they were doing something dumb, but I just don't think every, 
think it's just a coincidence, right? I think that there's a lot of moments where God has protected me um, and kept harm away from me. So, and I'll go to the last verse. And this verse is on Surah Al-Anfal um, 8, um, verse 24. And it says, All you who believe, answer Allah and his messenger when he calls you to that which will give you life. You know, being obedient, right? To, to We're supposed to follow the prophet. He came to teach us the book, right? And, and exemplify it. He was the walk in the Quran. Um, so we, we must obey him, right? And it says, And know that Allah comes in between a person and his heart. And verily, to him you shall be gathered. So here, in this verse, Allah is letting us know, right? Like, Allah is the one that comes between man and his heart, right? Um, so he can change your heart to make you a believer. Or he can change your heart to make you a disbeliever or, or prevent faith from entering your heart. Um, there's another verse that says, it is not the mind that understands, but it is the hearts, right? Um, it's the hearts that understand, right? Um, there's another narration that states that there will be some people that will come. The, the prophet was narrating at the, around that. You know, and they will come and they will, and they will recite the Quran beautifully, right? Um, they will worship. They will stand in prayer. All night, um, you know, like you know, they would do all of these acts of worship, right? Um, but he was saying that it would not go past their throats, right? And in other narrations, they say it would not reach their hearts, right? Meaning that you will see people do things, you will see people like do all of this worship, you know, have the pants hemmed up, the turban, the the very dark prostration marks, the, they got all the, they know the Arabic, they 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 recite the Quran beautifully, but some of these people that they wicked right um it does not go past their throats it does not go into their heart they don't really feel it um with the point i was just trying to say that and then there's another narration that says um that the hand the hearts of men are between the two fingers of 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 god of allah right um and he he turns he twists them whichever however he pleases um so i said all of these verses in connection to not just my situation, but other situations, right? There's going to be people that you might encounter, man, from your past that, that, that embrace Islam. And I know some people are going to be apprehensive. They, they're they not going to know if these people are really true, truly um, up on the dean or maybe they're just using this as a ploy to get close to you right, or get next to you. And I think that's a that's a real threat. But I, I remind you to, like, believe in your Lord, you know, um, which is why I read these verses. And... Allah is the only one that has the power to change the hearts, you know. Um, so, again, like, if, if the brother is sincere, like, alhamdulillah, mashallah, um, yeah, and I always, and because of this verse, and I know that your heart can change like this, right, I'm always trying to protect my heart. Um, I always ask Allah, you know, it's a dua that the messenger used to make, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that um, all change of the hearts, um, like, you know, to, like, make his heart firm right like like make my heart firm and, st and strengthen it right um so i always ask a lot to keep my heart pure um keep it firm on on the sarat right on the straight path um and to protect my heart from wickedness right there's a there's a narration that says that every time you do something bad every time you you commit a sin um your heart gets a black spot right and when you continue to do it <clears throat> it gets to the point where like your heart Come becomes covered, right? And so, I always ask God to keep my heart pure, man, because when your heart becomes dark, a lot of times ain't no going back from that. Um, and sometimes when we out here in the streets, man, and we out here doing whatever we doing and playing the game um, that we shouldn't be playing, sometimes your heart can become dark. Sometimes your heart can become wicked. Um, it's a lot of pain, it's a lot of hurt, it's a lot of trauma. Um, and yeah, when you're living, when you're constantly living in that and you're rolling around in that shit and, you you know, you drenched in it, um, yeah, it's hard to see light. It's hard to see positivity. It's hard to, re to for your heart to remain pure, right? When your innocence is robbed of you um, and you're just taking all these hits and these scars from life. It could be very hard, but hopefully that message is beneficial and you ain't got to be a Muslim to benefit from the message. Um, if I said anything that was right, it came from Allah, right? And if it was beneficial. And if I said anything wrong and I made mistakes, it came from me. Um, but I was just pondering on that and reflecting. Um, 
because this is things that we're just going to encounter. So y'all stay safe, y'all stay blessed, and have a good one. Assalamu alaikum.